Thank you all of you for the way you are behaving, or I'm not sure how else to translate it, but the um, for your patience and how you're well be how well impatient you are as we're trying to navigate this, you know, this new way of teaching through Zoom. Uh, so thank you all of you for your patience and those that are here. And I'll let you know now that the reason I asked them is uh, for some help is so that we can create some short stories and um, using the language. And I'll kind of explain it here in a little bit. Uh, or is that uh, what we're going to do is uh, use one subject. And the reason why I'm asking the, the purpose of these people that I chose is that I know they're language teachers. And what we're going to do is um, find one subject, one subject to talk about. And it can be anything. It could be anything in the culture. It could be any, any everyday thing, going to the store, you know, do whatever have you. And with the subject, we'll, we'll find, we'll try to find five different verbs that we can use. And with these five verbs, we're gonna find four different ways to say it, four different ways to use this verb. And then once we're done, we'll create one short story with this verb. And then um, those of you, so I tried downloading the, um, uh, what you call it, the uh, Clinkit um, keyboard onto my, my laptop, but I uh, wasn't able to get it or use it. So I can't type it out. Uh, maybe somebody else can, uh, who's a fast typer and has the keyboard. Um, maybe they can uh, type it out for me. Uh, with these sentences, and if there's any grammatical changes that need to be changed, then I can help guide that. Uh, but, you know, this is our first time trying this with a large group. So, again, everybody, thank you for your patience. And then if anybody has an idea of um, a subject we can use to talk about for something simple, um, go ahead and put that in the... Tasha says all the snow, you know, there's a lot of snow. Um, cooking, maybe cooking some, let's see. If um, Eva or Juan Klein want um, the weather, fishing, let's see. I'll write some of these down as well. So we have weather, cooking, Fishing. Eva says they're doing fishing at the moment. Eating. Okay. Okay, let's see. So the weather kind of seems to be coming up quite, and so does fishing. And those kind of go can go hand in hand, but we need to focus on one. Weather, I think, is a little more of an everyday thing that we can talk about. So we'll we'll kind of go with weather. And. Let's see. Need five different verbs dealing with the weather. So weather in general is called kute. Let's 
So if we're gonna talk about the weather, uh, like I said, in the weather for in general, Negun, uh, Klite, uh, Rob, would you be able to add Negun as well? Kulchish. And how, how, let's see, let's come up with, let's focus in on one verb we can use for now. Uh, you can uh, help scribe. You can be on the panel too, though, so. So, um, so let's see. What's one verb about the weather so if we can we can use so what's the weather like right now? Um, that's one we can use So there's different ways of saying it. So We're asking what the weather is right now. Wasa kuyati. I would say kuyati. Other people would say kuwati. It's just a slight difference, but they all mean the same thing. It's just different twang, as my auntie Nora would say, or their flavor. It's just the way they say it. But both mean the same thing. So there's kuyati and kuwati. All mean the same thing. So at this point, it's just kind of however you would, whatever feels natural for you to say, wasipoyati. I would say it with a Y. So if we look outside right now, uh, from where I'm sitting, let's see, I would, it's right now, it's just a little cloudy. So it's a quickly good. And then when I said, we're gonna focus in on these verbs, there's kind of a, there's a pattern in here with quality and quickly good. There's something in there that's uh, kind of the same. If you listen to it, it's the beginning of that one kote. So we borrowed ko. Is referring to the weather. So outside, it's it's cloudy right here right now. We're going to talk about it in the past tense. Kuli It's a little longer. Remember, I said some of these things will change. And just uh, people that are listening on and want to know how to write it, um, Negun is the one that's uh, helping scribe for me. Gunchish. This is talking about in the past tense, kuhli goods. So the verb that we're, or the word that we're focusing in right now is kute. If we're talking about tomorrow, so we uh, asked, what is the weather now? If we're going to ask it in the future tense, we would say, Wasakukwati. 
Wasa Kukwati. And I'll pause here for a minute because uh, there's quite a bit of um, writing that needs to be written down. And if you need me to say it again, go ahead and let me know. And so if you can highlight or underline um kute was the is the so if you want to write on the top of your papers kute is what we're talking about weather kute wasa kuyati underline kuyati that's what we're focusing in on we're focusing in on that that verb of how the weather is right now kukwati the weather will be I don't want I don't want you folks to focus in on wasa or anything else except for this this part. Uh, we're focusing on the verb. And so since we kind of were talking about the um, it's cloudy goods it's going to be cloudy and then if you want to get a little more formal about it sekanan or sekan Second means tomorrow. Second means on on the day of tomorrow. So what's another quisiat, uh, quisiat? Are you talking, Virginia? Kind of mute yourself. Okay. Uh, I was looking at k k k k k seeing how you were saying it. k k they have k k k k k k yeah, okay, because I wasn't hearing that. Okay, mm -hmm. it hasn't happened yet, but it's going to. Uh, in the future, it's mm -hmm. going to be cloudy. Say tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So, mm -hmm. so in Wrangell right now it's raining. So if I were to talk about rain yesterday, like yesterday it was raining last night. Siudak was tan and tatke. It was raining last night or the other day or yesterday. So the way to say tomorrow is seqanan, is how I usually say it. Um, another way to say it is seqan, seqan, seqanan, tomorrow, seqan, both mean same thing. And Megun just put down the words for today, tomorrow, yesterday. 
but remember, um, try and focus on the verbs. Uh, the nouns will naturally come to you as you start talking about it. Uh, so try and really focus in on these, these, um, the verbs. Highlight them if you have to, or underline them, whatever makes it easier for you to focus in on it. So teachers, when you're talking about the weather naturally in a natural conversation, Kay, uh, Kay Larson, let's see, the teachers that are on the panel, um, when you're asking a student or uh, you get into a natural conversation with somebody, you're not thinking about it, how are you talking about the weather? How do you talk about it? What's something that always comes up? How would you, if you were talking with, with one of your peers about weather, what would you say? And try and, try and take off your teaching hat right now and you know, you're not teaching the students, you're just talking with somebody. How are you doing that? So then that can help us focus on a little bit more on where we're going with um, talking about it. You so just say, how's, how's the weather? Yeah. How's the weather? Mm -hmm. And you're asking if is it, is it, is it warm? Is it raining? Mm -hmm. How's the weather? Uh, yeah, yucky today. Yucky mm -hmm. today. How's the weather today? Mm -hmm. Or. So, mm, cook. Uh, that's it, coach. Okay. So normally, um, like when I call the elders, I'll ask them first, how are they doing? Depending on who I'm talking to, how are you, grandpa or grandma? And they'll respond back. And then I'll say, how is the weather there? Um, and they'll respond. And then they'll ask me, uh, 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 could be another way of saying it. Uh, how is how is over? Or I'll just respond. I, they won't ask. I'll just respond to it, depending on how it is here. So, like somebody down in Seattle said, it's um, said it's windy. I would say Here though, it's really windy, or it's windy, storming. So if somebody asks for the severity of the weather. This all comes with inflection. I remember hearing my grandma Adeline um, when she would tell me it's really raining or really snowing or it's really blowing southeast. And so she would tell me, Sanachtu a nik so the inflection comes in from your voice, how the severity of the weather, that's how you would say it. It's all on, on your tone. So that's how I would say it's really windy or it's really, really snowing or it's really windy, it's really raining hard. All depends on how you say it. It all depends on your feeling that you put into, into putting in the word, putting your feelings into saying it. So that's how I would talk about the severity of the weather. Or sometimes the, the other, let's say here's an example. I was talking to my grandpa the other day uh, when the sun came out here for a couple of days. Let's see, he went, eh. He said, uh, I don't know how to translate eh, 
but it's an expression of something you, that's really nice or I'm not sure how else to put it, but that's how he said it. <clears throat> Here though, it's really sun shining nice on us. So when you use this, when you use it, some of these expressions that can also tell you the severity or the how sunny it is, how hard it's raining, how hard it's blowing, depending on which direction. And there's different ways of uh, uh, there's different ways of saying the sun came out. So let's say. Let's say it's kind of cloudy. Um, let's say um, the sun came out uh, from behind the clouds or the clouds covered the sun for a minute and then came out. My gram told me when we were just sipping coffee, she said, ha, kakan kuchi the sun poked his head behind out from behind the clouds again. So that's another way of saying this. Yeah, let's go ahead The sun came out from behind the clouds. And it's that that's referring to the sun came out. Um, so it's kind of funny that that like I said that it really paints a picture or it tells you what it's doing. And all. So when <laughs> when that that verb yaudzi ah. It was referring to something that, you know, when you're poking your head up behind something, that's what it means. <laughs> the, the, sun beside, the sun poked his head up behind the clouds is how I was describing it. So when I, if you were on the class the other day, uh, I said it's a very descriptive language and it, it's almost like watching TV. This is one of those that are like that. Uh, your your um, interjection, hauk. That's a hauk. 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 I thought you said when you first said it, hauk gagan kuhyadzi. Uh, when she was telling you. So the word ha is just an, is another an expression. I'm not sure how to translate it. I've heard both. Ha, ha.
the hook here, it's um, referring when the, it's like a hot dry day. So like for me, when um, sometimes when I go to Haynes, uh, when I was a kid, especially I used to get bloody noses you know, it's because it would get too dry for me and I'd get a bloody nose. And that's how it is for me when it gets too hot and dry. Call you a hook, my nose would bleed. So that's how I remember hearing that, the elders talking about it. And again, in that verb too, kuyu hook, the same thing, hook, it's refer referring to the weather again. Hook, our uh, hook, it was dr it dried out or it was dry. So it's just referring to the weather being dry. So thing it, um, we use parts of words to to make to make words. So as you can see, when I was talking earlier, it was referring to the weather. Uh, it means weather in general. That's just the I guess the noun. You call it the noun in English. But when you use it, it changes. Uh, you're using yeti for for something that's now what when it's really hot out Uh, all of these are using the word from kutet. The beginning is using that one kut. But um, it doesn't always, you gotta be careful. So remember I said Thinget can have multiple meanings. Uh, here's an example. You away yandus uh, how did they say it? um you wekin. So you hear in the beginning ko again kuyakin. It does this one's not referring to the weather at all. This is what it says is, this is what the people used to say a long time ago. So remember when the beginning I said that you have to listen carefully to, to, the, to the language because it, it, it'll change uh, depending on how you use use these these words, so ko in this in the way we're talking about it now is referring to the weather. But if I were to use it in in a, a ceremonial context, then it would change. Um, but also, it's just the context of how I'm using it. Ko Ko is referring to people. Ku'u, we borrowed it from that. Ko'yakirin. Ke can mean multiple different things too. Can mean pay, can mean saying something. It all depends on how they, our ancestors are structured these words.
Any questions so far? Uh, anybody in the chat have any other questions? So Eva, Steiki, uh, Juan Plain. Uh, if you want to think of a, a short five sentence um, story or interaction, maybe you had an interaction with an elder or one of your friends uh, will create a short story. And when, with that story, we'll, we'll use that and focus in on the, that verb those verbs that you used in English. Man, just think of it in English right now, and then we'll translate it. And then this is how we'll... Could you say something like, how's the weather up there, referring to Juno, or how's the weather down there, referring to the lower 48? I heard it was stormy and uh, um, I don't know how you guys, was windy, a yodity. I heard it was really windy, a yodity. Two buildings fell down. I saw it on the news. Something like that. Okay. Uh, I'm only jumping in because it's getting nigh on that time. Yeah. Okay, so with yours, with that sentence, I heard it was windy. Where we'll shift the focus on that. That verb will be ach. I heard it. I heard. Okay, so let's see. I heard it was windy. I heard it was windy there. And then someone might answer, ah, ayawditi kitain. Yes, it is really blowing here, or it is really storming.
So remember I said that you could, your voice can add the inflection too of how windy it is. And say, ah, hayo diti kidain. So you can add that, use your voice to tell you how windy it is. If you're telling somebody who's out of state or maybe they're just across the way in a different village. Yeah, can you put, that. hey, Paul, could you put in there something about way uchja? Let's see, you want, to, you want it to be a certain direction, like if it's southeast or north wind? Uh, For the people that are up there, they could probably hear it there in Juneau, the wind. Yeah, Khun, so a lot right now it's, blow, it's been blowing north wind. Khun, Khun do a nick. Khun is north wind. Khun do a nick. It's blowing north wind right now. Uh, so remember I said that People will say it different. Um, I guess up here, people will say, do a nuke. Khun do a nuke. Or khun do a nuke. or Hakaya Uditi, it's, it, it's really storming on us. Eva or Shkeki, did you guys um, come up with a sentence or anything in English? So those, I see some of some people. Um, are getting ready to leave. Um, with these sentences, use them. Use them as much as you can. Use them so you, you remember it. Um, remember to focus on the verb. Uh, that's that's really going to help you to remember it. It snowed so much that when it finally rained, it flooded. Um, somebody's been asking for that translation. Okay, so the way I would say it, Taita kwistan in kitain, akawe wusla, awetle wusla, and then it melted. Adakaya awshiku yak uti. And then it's like it flooded. So 
So for something that melted in general, it's a wood But like I said again, that, that you gotta be uh, how you use it. it some can also sometimes um, can almost sound like the tide went out too. So. <laughs> But in this, remember I said in this context, it's it melted. So you can say aqa or you can say awetle, either one, then it melted. It means same thing. I guess you could say how we talk. We're sinking or we sank. <laughs> So when you said it, it flooded, it reminded me of a story of my gram. I was getting ready to cook one short story. I was getting ready to cook dinner one time and it was uh, snowing or raining real hard, you know, summer or fall time, it rains hard. It was starting to drip. So it was raining so hard, it was starting to come through our, um, our ventilation. And I told my grandma, Graham, I said, it's, uh, it's dripping real bad above the stove. And she, without missing a beat, my grandma looked at me and she said, we're sinking. So that's what it reminded me of that story uh, where someone asked, uh, it started to flood. Uh, to, and so it reminded me of my grandma telling me we're sinking in our, our house. So, Kinshish, I see that everyone has to get back to work. I thank you all of you for your time and patience, especially with um, uh, this this class or the Zoom link that we had. We're still getting some of these kings worked out. So, Kinshish, the Kachuhan, we'll uh, we'll go over it again Friday. We'll go over things again Friday and then try and come up with a new one. And I'll... So Eve, you talked about the fishing, you're doing fishing, eating, cooking. Uh, if you guys can come up with a few sentences or verbs out of those, and then we'll come up with a short story. I'll see you all Friday. Same time. Same time, same bat station. Uh,